Can you come out as aphobic as well? I want to make sure my favorite LGBT foe is consistent in his LGBT foe beliefs. New video, aha. Uh -huh. What is this? I don't know who Jaden Animations is. Don't? No, I, I don't think so. Maybe. Okay, before you even say anything, let's lay out some ground out some ground rules. This is probably gonna be the most open I'll ever get about my personal life. I know I've shared tidbits of myself and life through little stories. Is it popular animator? Some Zoomer shit, I think. I don't know. What, what is it? Zo YouTube Annie for Zoomers? But when it comes to personal stuff, I'm very private. Especially within the past few years. I'm gonna be talking in very general surface level terms because specific personal details are for me to know and in the nicest way possible, none of your business. Basically, this is something I want to talk about, share, and bring a spotlight to. But at the same time, you get the Cliff Notes version. So no trying to assume- Hassan on the Tumblr, AFO block list? Wait, what is that? What am I doing? Assume or guess anything beyond what I'm sharing within this video. At the end of the day, we're all just strangers refusing to listen to the stranger danger rule. All right, formalities aside, if, if if she's friends with Jay Schlatt and Ted, then, you know, she's a friend of mine, all right? I love those boys. Good people. They just tell stories about their life through animation. It's chill and they're pretty Let's funny. Let's get into it. I've come to realize that I'm Arrow Ace, which stands for Aromantic Asexual. And I know what you're thinking. That's not gay. What the hell is that? And you know what? That is completely fair because I didn't know what that was either. Aromantic and asexual are two different things and I'm gonna break them down to you separately, starting with aromantic because no one really knows what that one is. And also it's my personal favorite. Someone who's aromantic is defined as a person who feels very little to no romantic attraction to anyone at all. So like they might not develop crushes on people or feel the need to be- Classic Tumblr lore, there was a huge use of aphobic users to block. In a romantic relationship with anyone. Very general term but hopefully you kind of get the gist. If not, here's a little story example from me. Growing up, I never developed crushes on anyone. I remember when I was in fifth grade, kids were talking about their crushes left and right, and it was starting to feel like something I had to experience too, just because I, I thought that's just what happens. Don't make fun of nine-year-old me, I was a sheep. Anyway, I decided I needed to have a crush because that's just what happens to people. And I very robotically chose this random kid in the class who we can call Pikachu, that's not his name. He didn't mean anything to me and I didn't do anything about this crush, like I didn't tell anyone or anything. It was just a headcanon thing for me to feel up to speed and like I was hitting my normal human emotions quota. But it's funny because on Valentine's Day, you know how in elementary school everyone would bring cheesy Walmart Valentine's cards for everyone in the class and then you'd have a box full of candy and hollow emotions from everyone. Well, my school did that. When I went through my box, I pulled out Pikachu's Valentine and thought to myself, someone who has a crush on someone would keep this. I think. So I put Pikachu's copy-paste Batman Valentine in my drawer and promptly forgot about it because it meant nothing to me, but hey, that's just what I thought I was supposed to do. Man, I'm so good at this. Then like a year or so later when my mom was going through my room, she pulled out the card and was like, why do you have this? And I was like, honestly, I have no idea. Years passed, I entered junior high and thought to myself, all right. Your stream was great trash data content is borderline terrible. <laughs> Hassan, why do you constantly ban dissenting chatters who are just simply making constructive criticisms? <laughs> This is the time where I love when people say true. Yeah, it's right, bro. This is I'm I'm fucking eating from the trash can of ideology, baby. People start developing crushes and then do something about it, like get into relationships or something. So I was like preparing to be interested in people. On the first day of school, I scoped out the room to see if there was anyone that I thought looked like someone I could develop a crush on. And this was when classes started being divided up into periods. So there were like six batches of people I sifted through, but no one caught my eye. And I thought, man, unlucky. Went through the whole school year, next year old around, classes changed, I did the same potentials crush scoping again, and the same thing happened. I wasn't drawn to anyone at all. Man. 
Unlucky again. Every year I thought something would change, especially going into high school when people started actually hitting puberty and were getting conventionally attractive. But my entire school life grades kindergarten to senior year, which I'm pretty sure is like 13 years, I wasn't interested in a single person throughout any of it. And what's funny was I was thinking, man, what's the deal? Why is no one attractive? And I went to a big high school. There were like three and a half thousand students there. Surely I am not the outlier in this formula. Why are none of you attractive? By the time I was going to college, I really felt like I had to find someone. It felt like I was falling behind the curve or if I was gonna find someone, it was gonna have to happen now. I made a lot of new friends and that's when I thought I developed my first genuine crush. Long story short, in hindsight, no, it wasn't a crush and I was just wrong. I just met someone who I thought was cool and funny and had a really strong desire to be close to them. But looking back, knowing what I do now, it wasn't in a romantic way. I realized I can get very excited and tunnel vision on people I think are really cool or interesting and kind of obsess over getting to know them or just want to- A lot of her stands are suddenly identifying themselves the same as her. I mean, dude, the thing is like, even if that's the case, and, and some people are doing it because they, like, worship her or whatever. Which I doubt that that is happening. Okay? Literally, what, you think, like, a 14-year-old is going to be like, oh, I guess I'm ace and aromantic if they're not? You know what I mean? What, are you crazy? Hormones are going to get in the way if they're not, you know? Like, some of you act like you've never been 14, which is crazy. <laughs> to spend a lot of time with them yes we met a 14 year old i mean i was a 14 year old and um i mean i didn't have a lot of like helpful guidance on fucking youtube and shit to, to guide me through uh this process and when i was a 14 year old i'm you know i was incredibly horny like incredibly Whenever I got into those tunnel vision moments, if I sat down and asked myself if I actually wanted to be in a relationship with them and hold hands or cuddle or kiss, Anthony the Padilla was, interviewed her. Not really, but if they wanted to, I could go along with it. Which I do not think is right. <laughs> in my very old flirting video, which I refuse to rewatch, I think at one point in it, I said something along the lines of, if you're interested in someone, but they just want to be friends, I don't understand why some people can't deal with that. And that was primarily because I didn't realize there was an emotional difference between a crush or falling in love and just being really good friends with someone. So, oops, sorry for the bad take, I think. I really just thought having a crush on someone was wanting to be their number one best friend. Look, I said don't make fun of me. To me, it used to feel like if I was wanting to become friends with someone to that high of a degree, that would be the next step or justify why I wanted to put this much time, effort, and energy into one person. And it didn't feel right or even fair going through all of this with someone and then tell them they're just a friend. I don't know. It just didn't feel like it made sense, even though I really- I mean, I think this is probably really helpful for people who, uh, you know, identify as, uh, as, as, uh, a romantic ace you know what i mean like i personally cannot even comprehend it like I, I just literally i've talked about this before okay but i mean this is twitch chat there's hella people like this uh in in especially twitch chat no disrespect i'm just saying like this is literally where i uh, got the most backlash uh for not understanding it but i think this video is overall really good because it uh you know it can help people identify certain things Not exactly what arrow has to mean is more of an ace arrow combination speaking from her. Didn't technically see them in a romantic way. I just didn't understand what was going on really or that there was supposed to be real emotions instead of a logical understanding of, of steps. And the fact that I was under the assumption that I was supposed to be interested in people in a romantic way didn't help with anything. I always preferred to say good friends but never felt like I could have that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I unsub because you don't understand this. No, Sorry. That we would just start drifting apart, Jeez. which I obviously didn't want either. It's been a very long journey discovering this about myself everything i'm saying has all been extremely subconscious and not understood or defined for many years i even used to think i was bi or pan for the longest time because i would think to myself well bi is being interested in both genders 
I don't really care for either, but zero is equal to zero, so I guess I'm buyer pan. I got math involved. If I knew what aromanticism was when I was growing up, things would have been a lot less complicated for. Türkiye'de bir tane yok aromantik. Hepimiz abazayı zamana koyayım. Bir tane yok. For me, a lot sooner. I think it's mainly because people don't really talk about it or even know what it is or that it's real. Romance and love is the number one most talked about topic on the planet. <laughs> Everything I've been taught or learned through society is that love and romance is everywhere. Everyone feels it and it's gonna happen to you. Just a funny little note, there was a point where I was listening to some generic romance song on the radio, you know, like all of them. And I just suddenly thought to myself, wait, wait. Do people, Do people actually, actually feel, feel these, these things, things towards, towards each other? Like, like all these mushy lyrics, lyrics are real emotions? They're, they're not, not joking? joking? And that's when I started feeling like something was different. <laughs> I approached romance under the blanket term thought of, sure, why not? And didn't recognize it was actually a, a feeling, which might sound stupid, but look, I don't know. No one presented me with any other options. I did a lot of rationalizing. If someone ever expressed romantic interest in me, I would mentally make a kind of logical list of their pros and cons and the pros and cons of what a relationship would look like with them based on what I knew about them as a person. I didn't realize there was supposed to be an extra, like, excited feeling or the fact that you're not supposed to think about it as if it were a business exchange. I understand compatibility is a huge important variable when it comes to sharing a relationship with someone, but at the end of the day it's still, apparently, still a very emotionally driven thing. And I literally had to make that discovery and teach it to myself. Now, I'm gonna talk about being asexual very briefly, and I'm gonna preface it with Let's all just be mature about this, all right? We're all pretending to be adults here. I've got my eye on some of you. Yeah, Behave. Okay, this is definitely treading into well. uncomfortable personal boundary territory for me, but yeah, I do want to share that I'm asexual too, which is defined as someone who feels little to no intimate attraction to anyone. Look, I know we said we're all adults, but I'm still gonna dance around the vocabulary, all right? Yes, there's a difference between romantic and intimate attraction. Little side note, I will say you can experience romantic attraction to someone, but no intimate attraction. Or you can experience intimate attraction, but no romantic attraction. You can be one and not the other. It's not necessarily a package deal. Most people feel both, and I do not feel either. Anyway, I have never been magnetically attracted to the look or shape of a single person in my entire life, and did not realize it was a real thing until very recently. I'm able to identify when someone looks conventionally attractive, like by textbook definition, but I never realized people are genuinely drawn to people they think are attractive. I didn't know that people could just see someone and be like, wow, they're gorgeous. I would love to get to know that person Oof. or maybe go on a date with them or whatever else you people do. D I didn't think it was real. I thought people were exaggerating or something. I don't know. And I also couldn't believe- we'll Look at Tornado Watch in a second after this video, okay? That's wild to me. Like that, that not having that feeling is, is so far beyond comprehension for me. Like, I can't believe I'm repeating this because Ninja had originally said this, but like Sydney Sweeney. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to say Sydney Sweeney. And I think most people will- understand exactly what i mean also completely unrelated but there's apparently like a like an exhibitionist movie that she did again completely unrelated i don't know why i'm talking about these sorts of things but um it's called voyeurs yeah again unrelated to anything i don't know where that came from but She's mid, dude. Nice taste, though. She's mid. Okay, dude. That's a fucking two months subscribe. Should I permanently? I should ban him permanently. Yeah, that's a perma. That's crazy. Crazy. Mid? What? What? That some people feel that with multiple people. 
or like celebrities, which sounds absolutely exhausting. It ties back to when I was in school, like looking around for people to like. It makes sense now that no one caught my eye because that doesn't happen to me. I was just wasting my time for 13 years. I feel like such a fool. Now, there's an easy assumption to make about asexual people and that they all have zero interest in being intimate with any- You just banned an aromantic asexual chatter? This is why you don't understand? No, that chatter wasn't ace. Also, being ace doesn't mean you can be, like, disrespectful. ...anyone at all, which actually isn't true. Some of them are genuinely turned off by it, and some aren't. Some reasons would be that they just don't mind it, or they want to make their partner happy, or enjoy the emotional closeness of it. There's a million different reasons and a million different people. Am I sharing what kind of a people I am? Nope. And you don't know me personally enough in the slightest to be able to try and parasocially analyze where I stand on that spectrum. I'm just here to say I am this. We are moving on. When I stumbled onto the term arrow ace and started realizing I fall into that category, it helped me feel much- You think white women are exotic? Straight up. I orientalize white women from the Midwest more confident and sure of myself. I've read a lot about how people say they felt broken or that something was wrong with them, but honestly, I was the complete opposite. Coming from my very biased perspective, I think Arrow Ace is one of, if not the coolest and most confident orientations out there. Not needing a single gram of romantic or intimate validation from anyone is so cool. All you need is yourself to be happy, maybe friends and family too and birds. The more I came to terms with the fact I'm Arrow Ace, the more empowered and capable I felt. But at the same time, I was also starting to feel more alone and isolated. As cool and amazing and unique and awesome as I think it is, it can be really hard for other people to relate to or even understand. Everyone else and their orientations are able to bond and relate to the love and romance aspects, and we're over here like, we don't do that. I don't even know if I'm explaining it very well. It kind of does go against everything everyone's ever been taught about anything. Romance is taught to be a basic assumed emotion, which I do think is a bit misleading. A common argument used against the Arrow Ace orientation is that romance and intimacy is what makes someone human. But I mean, I don't know, lots of birds mate for life, which is a better ratio than people. And all animals get frisky. You know, that's just how they became not extinct. It's not an exclusive to humans thing. If I were to guess, I would assume the thing that makes someone human is basic empathy. Like, I'm not an emotionalist monster. I can still love people. I love my family and my pets, just platonically. And I would hope that you're the same. I just don't experience romantic love, which I don't know. I don't think that's harming anyone. Definitely not me. I'm having the time of my life. I don't think you need- Fucked up. It's fucked up. No. No. It's fucked up to be in a relationship to be happy. And if you don't want to be just on your own, I think there's many types of people in relationships that push the boundaries of what a conventional relationship looks like. Telling someone that they need to be in a romantic relationship to be happy. And I think looking at a video like this and being like, what is the damaging aspect of this? And immediately rushing to the conclusion that like 14 year olds are going to watch this and think they're arrow ace or whatever the fuck is literally just like, Stemming from a place where you're just like, I don't understand it, so it's fucked up. As some chatters pointed out. You know? And fulfilled is weird. And then when that person says they're not happy, they're told relationships take a lot of work, and that's just how it goes. And that's also weird. I don't know. I also think it's weird that once someone reaches a certain age, people inherently start thinking it's sad they're not in a romantic relationship or assume they're lonely and sad. No one thinks a child is sad and lonely just because they're not in a long-term relationship. I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. And, and I also think I'm rambling. At the end of the day, it's all very complicated to talk about these things, especially because I don't know the feelings I'm supposed to be feeling, let alone talk about. I just know for me, the terms aromantic and asexual are able to articulate things I was subconsciously feeling and thinking. Bro, Chatter saying, I feel like this is sociopathic with extra steps. Literally missing the, f the, the major component that was described two minutes ago. Like, not even two minutes ago, one minute ago, about how... Like, being aromantic does not mean you're not, like, you don't have empathy, okay? 
Sociopathy is is not having empathy. Antisocial uh, antisocial personality disorders revolve around not having uh, not being able to develop empathy uh, in the most reductive terms. <laughs> thinking before I even realized I was feeling and thinking them. I don't plan on talking about this very much, if at all, ever again. I just want to play my silly little video games, maybe tell a story here or there. But I wanted to bring the orientations to the surface and try to get more representation out there because I thought if I could help more people become more aware of this, then that would be awesome. I was confused as hell for a while and could have used something like this. It's a real thing. You don't have to feel any sort of romance or whatever to be considered a real person. Personally, I think it's really cool and badass. And don't be afraid to look more into Aram. Bro, she just hadn't had a conversation with me. If she talked to me, she'd be completely anti-men. <laughs> yeah, I can change her. I can make her a, a misandrist, dude. <laughs> Anticism or asexualism, if any of what I said in this video resonated with you to any degree. Like I said, this is all very surface level stuff. They're both much larger spectrums than you'd think. And maybe you fall under some umbrella category with them. I don't know, or not. Either way, this has all been my personal experience with this stuff. Is there more for me to figure out within it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. It can get pretty complicated and confusing. Haha, <laughs> awesome. Will I be sharing any of that with you? Nope, no way. This is all you get. Hope you can understand even just a little of what I talked about. And if not, that's totally fine. I just hope you can be nice. Thanks for listening. I never really intended on making this video because I haven't really felt a strong urge to, like, I, I don't like using this phrase for myself, but, but come out. Never go on Facebook mental illness groups? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like that one chatter uh, in my DMs who said, like, if you come to St. Saint, uh, Saint Paul, like, I'll fucking kill you. Like, don't ever step foot inside of St. Paul, like, I'll murder you. And I was like, that's easy. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I trust me. Like I, one won't go on Facebook ever. Or no, it wasn't St. Paul. Sorry, St. Louis. It wasn't St. Paul. It wasn't St. Paul. It was St. Louis. I fucked it up. St. Paul loves me. Not St. Louis though. So that was like that's super easy for me to avoid, including the, uh, you know, avoiding Facebook mental health groups. Man, I totally relate. No one in elementary school found me attractive either. Wait, that's the opposite of what she was saying. <laughs> okay, that was Being Not Straight by Jaden Animations. Um... Apparently, a, a Zoomer animator who uh, is friend to Ted and Jay Schlatt. True ally. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Want to correct yourself? There aren't both shows. How dare you? Both places, I'm sure, have wonderful experiences. It's just that one, unfortunately, has a person who wants to kill me, apparently. Okay. There is that. Pretty sure she's a millennial. What the fuck? Haven't you seen her Pokemon video? No, I have not. I have not seen her Pokemon's video. I have not seen any of her videos. Story of Jaden's face reel is fucked up. Wait, why? Was this like... Was this Anthony doing a face reel for her for the first time ever? No. You didn't watch her collab with Game Grumps? 
No, someone at VidCon revealed their face? Wait, what the fuck? Really? She had an eating disorder and wrote a song with Boy in a Band about it? What the fuck? Crazy. Aiden animation reveals her traumatizing face. When reveal. did your face reveal finally happen? The first time I ever went to VidCon, people were gonna see me, so I need to just like get over it. And, like one of the people in the groups was like vlogging and like in my face and stuff. Mm. And then after VidCon, I was like, can we like edit my face out? I'm actually not that comfortable with it. I was like, I'll, I'll edit it myself. I edited it all. It took like a couple hours and I sent it back. And then he's like, I think I'm going to put the one with your face up. They had like, you know. Bro, that is so fucked. Jaden, like VidCon vlog featuring Jaden. My name was first. And like they put hashtag Jaden face reveal. In. Yo, that is Fucked up, dude. Yo, YouTubers are demons, dude. Maybe they need they need to be in the Facebook mental health groups. I swear to God. What the fuck? That is so insanely not cool. Oh my lord, dude. Miskiff would not do that. Don't say Miskiff Brain. Literally, Miskiff would not do that, okay? So you know how unacceptable that is, okay? Because Miskiff would do most things. Hey. The video is over now. Uh, but, but if you enjoyed that, why don't you like, comment, and subscribe? Uh, and, and if you want to see more of that, just go, uh, well, YouTube's got it around here somewhere.